What's up and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I like to make my pixel art mouth tables. Now the way that I set them up is usually pretty complex and I use a whole 5x5 grid but this time I want to do a smaller example so we're just going to use a simple 3x3. Alright so I've already created my three shapes so we have a smile neutral and we have a frown or what would be like a more of an o shape and then we're also going to create an open mouth variant for these and a half open mouth we're just going to copy all these that way i can make sure that i make them around the same shape and i'm going to go ahead and draw the mouths all the way open just to see what they would look like we're going to start with the o shape now the mouths be sure to keep the teeth all on the same level that's the most important thing is keeping your top row of teeth stationary. Something different that I'm going to do is actually make a smile frame. It's going to look weird, but I feel like it's necessary. That way, when you have a pixel art model, you can't really smile with your teeth if none of the frames are drawn with the teeth showing. So I decided to make sure that I drew one with teeth. And just like that, we have mouth shapes. I like to name my mouth shapes similar to how a chessboard works, where we have letters and numbers accompanying the grid. I'll just draw it out for you in Photoshop. So going by this grid, our neutral frame, which is just the straight line, is going to be a two. So what we're gonna do is go through all of these and set them up. So we're just gonna do some renaming. All right, that's all the mouth shapes done. I do, however, have a tip when making these mouth shapes. It's better to make mouth shapes that will fit you and your character, not just ones that would look good on the character because when you move your mouth, that's how the character moves their mouth. So you want it to fit the way that you express yourself too. I would definitely say it's worth going through and figuring out what mouth shapes that you yourself make, like sit in front of the camera, make some funky mouth shapes and be like, damn, I look like a fool, but that's not what my O shape looks like. And then make your O shape look like what your O shape looks like. I usually make my mouth tables really complex with a five by five grid, but for this one, we're just gonna be doing a three by three, so it's going to be easy. I'm gonna be throwing in one more toggle. That way it's in the tutorial and you'll know how to do it in case you wanna change your mouth shapes. I feel like this is a super duper important tip, but if you're going to be having a toggle, always have that planned in ahead of time rather than throwing stuff in last minute because it's going to be really painful to go back and fix a mouth table that's set up in this manner. Don't forget to scale your art before you export. I swear I forget this tip every single time. I'm gonna be removing literally everything other than the mouth stuff. I'm gonna create a parameter called cat mouth. No spaces in your parameters. I always forget. We're gonna go minimum of zero, maximum of one. Zero is off, one will be on. So we're gonna leave everything like this for now. We are gonna select all of our mouth shapes and put them on cat mouth. Now, we are going to select the non-cat mouths, slide cat mouth to one, and turn it off. And then on the other way around, we're going to turn off the cat mouths when the parameter is at zero, and turn on the cat mouths when it is at one. I'm going to turn on the visibility for all of the mouth shapes, just so you can see it. Usually when I set these up, I'll make it so that it's not a smooth transition like this, because personally, fading is a bit frustrating to me. But you can actually turn off all of the fading in VTube Studio by changing the speed at which the toggle triggers. 
So now that these are all on here, we're going to select everything. What we want to do for the mouth shapes is make sure that when we're setting up our table, we are selecting both the cat mouth shape and the normal mouth shape. That way we can change the parameter all at once rather than having to do the entire table twice. Oh, that's a mouthful. So for mouth open, we have three frames. Let's go back to our algorithm. Let's do some math. The minimum number of mouth open is zero and the maximum of mouth open is one. So we know that our number that our space that we're working with is one. One divided by the number of shapes, which is three equals one third. So we have to divide these in one third chunks. So to do that, these are gonna be 0 0.001 sized gaps. That way, the frame fading is instant. All right, these are the points that we're gonna be setting our mouth to. So we're gonna set the minimum value to zero and we're gonna set the maximum value to 0 0.33. I usually write these down on a sticky note. I find that it really helps, but I wrote it down for you guys in Photoshop so that we can see it. Next, we are gonna grab all of the B mouth frames. We're going to adjust and this is going to be at 0 0.331 and 0. 0.66 and finally the mouth all the way open frames or the c frames will be set at 0 0.661 and 1. all right then hit ok and as we slide through it it should change between the different mouths next we have to do the mouth form mouth form goes from negative 1 to 1 so the absolute value of negative 1 plus 1 equals 2 this is going to be the same as the other one by the way we have three frames that we're splitting in between. So two divided by three equals 0 0.6 repeating. So we have to make our gaps 0 0.6 gaps. So our sizes are going to be negative one and negative 0 0.331, negative 0 0.33 and positive 0 0.33, 0 0.331 and one. Back in Live2D, we're going to select everything and then set two key forms on mouth form. Now we're going to go through and select the numbers for everything instead of the letters. So we're going to select A1, B1, C1. A1, B1, C1. We're going to go to mouth form and we're going to adjust and set it to the values we just figured out. Then do the same for the next sets of numbers. All right, and just like that, we have a full mouth table done. Now, to export everything, this can be a little bit tricky, and this is where you want to make sure that you have everything sectioned off really well. You're going to want to edit your texture atlas. doesn't have to be too big. And then just make sure all your mouth shapes fit on there. Hit OK. We're going to export for runtime. All right, guys, this is the mouth. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful whatsoever. We're going to do a couple of mouth shape tests just so you can see what it looks like compared to a mouth rigged with V-Bridger. 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 <laughs> okay, so. Uh... I think it came out great. This is just a couple of test sentences. She says, <laughs> no seashell down by the seashore. Okay, I probably shouldn't choose something where it's just like, ah, cha 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 <laughs> Okay, the cat mouth is creepy as hell, but it does do the shapes. It definitely does the shapes. Now, you can get a much more dynamic mouth if you add more frames on the axis that has the mouth form. That way it's not just smile and frown. <laughs> and just like that, we're done! <laughs> yeah. Bow chicka wow wow. Or I guess I could go, bow chicka meow. <laughs> I love playing with this dang thing. Oh my gosh.